Hello, this is David Hillier and I will be giving a short video about discounted cash flow valuation. I will be focusing on a number of shortcut formulae that you can use to make things much simpler in your calculations. This lecture is predominantly for my University of Strathclyde students, but it is free to use by anyone. So, the material that I'll be covering is taken from my textbook, Corporate Finance, and the chapter is Chapter 4. The section is Section 4.4, and the title of that section is Simplifications. So hopefully the material in this lecture will make things considerably easier for you in your calculations. Now, what I'll do is I'll just increase the zoom size to 200 on the spreadsheet so that we can uh, see better. So it's about simplifications. There are four predominant simplifications that I'll be going through. Uh, first I'll talk about perpetuities. Perpetuities are level cash flows that go on forever. Then I'll talk about growing perpetuities and these are cash flows that grow at the same rate forever. An annuity is a level cash flow that occurs for a set number of periods and a growing annuity is a series of cash flows that grow at a certain or the same percentage for a certain number of periods. So we'll be looking at these and we'll also be looking at uh, examples of these. So here are the definitions. Just let you look at those. Uh, greater definitions in more detail is uh, given in the book. So let's start off with the perpetuity formula. If you look at the, uh, this formula here, uh, you'll see that what I've done is I've taken all the cash flows that uh, occur in the future and discount them back to today. Because we're looking at a stable cash flow stream, then instead of having the subscript of C0, C1, C2, C3, these cash flows are the same. And so we don't need a subscript. And so therefore we have just C here. This plus and then the ellipsis, the three dots, gives you the information that this cash flow series will occur forever. Now in the, the book, we you know, we talk about how you can get from here to here. It's a fairly straightforward um, kind of set of mathematical uh, de derivation, really. It's a, it's, a, it's a mathematical derivation. I won't spend time going into that here, but what I'll tell you is that this series simplifies to this very simple uh, formula. So the present value of a perpetuity is equal to the cash flow divided by R. Now one thing I want to make very clear here, the first cash flow must occur one period from now. If the cash flow occurs today, then the first cash flow occurs today, then the formula will change to be C plus C over R. Why? Because we're not discounting the first cash flow. So this simplification only works if the first cash flow occurs one year from now. So let's look at an example. This is example 415, and it's a perpetuity, and I'll, I'll just go through the calculations here. Now, the perpetuity pays £100 a year. So we have £100. The interest rate is 8%, and it's compounded once per period. What's the present value of that? Well, it's just equal to 100 divided by 8%, and that's 1,250. Now, the question that we next asked is, what happens if interest rates fall? Well, if interest rates fall to 6%, we see that the perpetuity grows by quite a considerable amount, £416 uh, in, in value. And we actually say that perpetuities are very sensitive to rate changes. And that's because these cash flows occur forever. And uh, it means then you've got quite a significant effect of rate 
rate changes or interest rates for these cash flows that occur f in later periods. This is something that you should definitely read more about in the textbook. So that's a perpetuity. And what I want you to, to look at is if you look at the, the previous formula, you see present value is equal to C over R. When the cash flows are growing at a steady rate, that formula must change slightly. And the formula becomes present value is equal to C divided by R minus G, and G is the growth rate. Now, if the growth rate is zero, that means the cash flows don't change. That's zero, you just simplify to C divided by R. So this formula is, it's a slightly more complex formula, but it's, it's simple t to remember. Let's just look at an example. So we have cash flows equal to 100,000 euros. And the first cash flow occurs next year. So remember, for these formulae, you need the first cash flow to occur one period from now. Now, we're told that the growth rate is equal to 5%. What's the relevant interest rate? It's 11%. So what's the present value? Well, the present value is equal to the cash flow. Now, this is the first cash flow that occurs one year from now, divided by R minus G. And you're left with 1,666,667 euros. Now, another requirement for this formula is that the growth rate must be less than the discount rate. Why? Because if the growth rate is higher than the discount rate, this will become infinite. Okay? Uh, because the gro you're growing more than... Uh, investors are expecting so therefore you have a and you're continually growing more than investors are expecting so therefore you have an infinite value the formula doesn't actually work because the, and, and remember this is a simplification formula it doesn't work because why well if it's 0.11 divide minus say 0.12 that becomes a negative value and and it only works when the growth rate is less than the discount rate. So please, please remember that. So three things uh, with these formulae that you have to remember. And in a lot of exam questions um, ask this about, you know, what, what are the three main things you have to remember? So first one is the numerator. And that's the, the C. The the cash flow must occur one period from now. If the cash flows occur at any other period, the formula needs to be modified. The second thing to remember is the, dis the relationship between the discount rate and the growth rate. The growth rate must be less than the discount rate. And the third uh, uh, assumption or the third point to remember is that there's a timing assumption here. Now, normally cash flows will occur continuously throughout the year or throughout the period. But in this, these formulae, we assume that the, the cash flows occur at regular and discrete points in time. So that's an assumption. It's not a valid assumption normally, but it's an assumption. And again, this tells you that these formulae will point you in the, the right direction for valuation. Um, and, but you, as a scholar, as, an, as someone who understands finance, will need to make your own slight adjustments to ensure that the values are as correct as possible. We're now going to go to the third point, and that is an annuity. An annuity is a cash flow stream that take, occurs over a fixed number of periods. Okay, so we can look at an annuity if I put time here and cash flow here. And let's say one, two, three, four, five. Then an annuity is like 10 euros occurring every period. Now that can be like, for example, mortgage payments where the, the mortgage rate is fixed. It could be car loans where you have to pay the same amount every period that's an annuity so you might want to know well what is the the value of this cash flow stream you could go through the, the process where we have r you know we can do it 
Um, a long way, let's say R is equal to 10%. We can work out the present values of all of these. So it would be 10 divided by 1 plus 10%. Now, notice I haven't put the percent there, and I will do that in a minute. To the power 1, let's say 10%. Yep, okay. So the present value of £10 one year from now, when the interest rates are 10%, is equal to 9.09. .09. This formula, because I've put in absolute cell references, this should work uh, just by copying down. So notice what happens, that although the cash flow is the same, every period the present value of those cash flows are less. And if we want to find the value of that cash flow stream, we would simply sum that series. And we sum that series, and it's 37,907. Now, we can use this particular formula. So let's just do that. Um, so it's equal to the cash flow, 10, multiplied by 1 over R, 1 divided by 10%, minus, now, 1 divided by 10%, multiplied by 1 plus 10% to the power T, what's T? It's five periods. We then need to make sure that we've got the correct number of brackets and should result in the same. Now, that seems really quite difficult to put all of that. And if you're in a uh, spreadsheet, there's a formula. If you're using uh, Excel and it's called PV, uh, the PV formula is just to do it as the rate, the number of periods is five, the payment. Now, for the payment, Excel treats payments as outflows. So what I'm going to do is just put a minus sign and put 10 because the payment's 10. Close the brackets and you're left with a very simple uh, result there. And, and that is a, a function in Excel that you should try and remember. In an exam, you're probably, you may be asked to remember this formula or you may not be. For my students, uh, it really depends on the course, um, and I will talk to the students about this in the class. So here's an example. Let's just take this example here. Uh, you've just won a, a competition, and it pays £50,000 a year for 20 years. Now, your first payment is one year from now, so that tells us we can use this formula. It's 50000 T is equal to 20. What's the interest rate? It's equal to 8%. Now, you can go through the formula that's there. I'm just going to cheat and use the present value formula. So it's the rate, number of periods, and the payment. We'll just do a minus. There you go, 499.07. Now, again, we've got rounding error. It happens all the time if you're working to just a small number of decimal places. In the intermediate calculations, that's going to happen. Right, okay. Now, the, one of the things is, is that, you know, in these competitions, they, they, the organisers sometimes say, you know, it's a million pounds competition. And how does that work? Well, it's 50,000 pounds for 20 years. But in reality, the value of that, uh, prizes is much less. It's less than 50% and it's 490,000. Okay, so let's move on. The future value of an annuity formula. So this is another formula. Now these are all simplifications and you know again it depends on the course that you're on whether you're asked to remember this or whether these are given to you in a formula sheet. But uh, if you want to go into these in more detail and understand them better then read the textbook. Because uh, I do spend time on that. So, future value here. So, let's just look at that. We've got a cash flow. It's 3,000. Um, let, let's put, uh, well, let's just put 3,000. Uh, R is equal to 6%. T is equal to 30. How much will your money grow to? Well, what I'm going to do is you can go through this formula, but Yep, I'm going to use the wonder of Excel and use another function, which is the FV function. And 
it's as you can see here it's rate number of periods and then payment I'll put a minus sign because it's going out 237.174.56 so Excel is really fantastic or any spreadsheet is fantastic for this um, you know but in an exam you might have to you'll probably be asked to do this through uh, pen and paper which means that you'll need a calculator for that right okay straightforward uh, a series of shortcuts uh, keep on remembering the same things though that um, the cash flow first cash flow has to take place one year from now that applies to all of these formulae uh, also the you know, if you've got any growth rates then the growth rate must be less than the interest rate and finally uh, the cash flows are assumed to take place at discrete points in time now we're going to get on to some slightly more tricky things um, this is where a lot of students really s get stuck in the exam questions this is where you tend to find the, the challenge questions being so it's important that you you follow through on this now I'm going to just take an example this example uh, comes from it's example 4.18 in the textbook so Roberto Balotelli is going to receive a four-year annuity of 500 euros per year these and these cash flows they're only four cash flows but they're cut they start at year six the interest rate is ten percent so what's the present value of that and you can see in the number line uh, that's when these cash flows take place now we need to work with the assumptions and the assumption is is that of these shortcuts is that the first cash flow occurs one year from now so if we use this formula then we'll be finding the value the the effective value of that four cash flow stream in year five why because year five is a year before the first cash flow so we need to use a shortcut formula to get the value of this at this time and then we then discount that back to time zero so that we can get the present value today so it's a two-stage process so let's, let's just go through this. So we are wanting to get this cash flow stream to discount this back to time five. We can use the formula. In the book, I show you how to look up tables. And in the tables, uh, they're at the back of the book. But we use this formula to get back to find the effective value at time five. And then we discount that back to time zero. I'll just take a, an example so it's um, C is equal to and, and let's put C C 6 to 10 right, okay so 6 7 8 9 no see that's I can't count it's four cash flows it's 6 to 9 uh, cash flow in your 6 7 8 and 9 and how much is that it's 500 euros what's the interest rate it's 10 percent well, it's T, well, T is equal to 4. Now, I've got R here as a small r. Sometimes, I'm quite careless sometimes, as long as you're just quite clear. As you notice, I've got a small T here. Don't get hung up on that. Just as long as you, in, you could actually say time instead of just T. Now, what we want to do is we want to find the value at time 5. Why is it 5? Well, remember, our shortcut formula uh, finds the present value of a cash flow stream that occurs one period from now so if you are in period six then you're going to be looking at the value in time five well you I'm going to you can use that formula on the screen here but I'm just going to use the Excel PV is equal to the rate which is four percent number of periods of four and the cash flow is minus 500 so the value at time 5 is 1584 what's the present value well we need to discount that back five periods so it's the value divided by one I'm got, let's just one plus ten percent to the power now how many periods well it's five periods that you're taking it back so you just write five there and so that's the present value 984.12 just again you've got rounding error uh, that's the present value of that cash flow stream that starts in year six 
Okay, let's take another example. Now this example, it's received £50,000 a year for 20 years. You assume that the first payment occurs immediately. Now I talked about this earlier on in this video, but the first payment occurs immediately. Now, this shortcut formula assumes that the first cash flow occurs one year from now. But in this example, the first cash flow occurs now. And so what we do is we find the present value of the cash flows that start from one year. Now, if this is a 20-year annuity beginning immediately, then that means there'll be 19 payments left. And then we simply add the cash flow that occurs just now. So let's, let's just go through this. We've got C and C is equal to 50,000. R is equal to 8%. Now I'm going to put T here, I'm going to say 19, right? Because 19 is the 19 remaining payments. What's the present value? It's equal to PV, the rate is 8%, number of periods is 19, and the payment is 50,000. There you go, 480. The present value of the total stream, is equal to this plus 50,000 and it comes out to be 530179.96 which just rounded up to 530,180 pounds. Now going to example 4.2 this is a difficult one okay because what we've got here is we've got an annuity but it's only payable once every two years and this annuity stretches out over twenty year a twenty year period, but because the the cash flow occurs every two years, you've only got ten cash flows. Now, what are we told? We're told that the the cash flow is four hundred and fifty. We know that T. Now, remember, we're talking about the number of cash flows, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reframe this into looking at an interest rate, which is a two year interest rate. And the period, each period is two years, but there are 10 years. Okay, now that's equivalent to two, two years per period, which in total is 20 years. But how do we get the, the interest, the two-year interest rate? Well, we're told that the annual interest rate is 6%. So what is, what is that in two-year terms? Well, if you put invest for one euro today, or one pound today, it will grow to one 0.06 pounds after one year and it'll grow to 1.1236 pounds after two years. So that is equivalent to a 12.36% interest rate that is uh, that is for a two-year period. So you can do that calculation. I'm just going to write this down. So what is the uh, present value? So what I've done is I've reframed the question but then I'm just going to go to the shortcut formula. And what is it? Well, PV is equal to the rate, 12.36, number of periods, 10, and the cash flow is 450. 2505.57. Right. Now we're getting even more complex. Now I'm going through this very fast because of time constraints. Uh, I'm also going to the dentist. 10 minutes so I have to I have to get out and uh, do this this video uh, I would like you to then go back and you know you can rewind it and you know and pause it and uh, go through this again and again until it works out for you this one we've got uh, a young couple who are saving for university for a newborn daughter now when I wrote this book um, this is, you know, I come out with examples that I see, and uh, in the news there was uh, Prince of Wales, uh, you know, was expecting to become a dad, but the child wasn't born at that time, so I just made it up. So, you know, you might be thinking, who's Susan? Well, Susan isn't Susan. It, Susan should be George. But anyway, uh, maybe in a future edition I'll uh, change that. But okay, go back to the question. Uh, you've got university expenses of 30,000 euros per year, but these expenses will actually take place in 18 years' time. Um, it's going to it's going to be student fees plus upkeep, quite a conservative estimate, I think. But these cash flows will start, start in 18 years' time. We're looking at an annual interest rate of 14%, and, and the question is, is, well, if you're going to have to pay these things 18 years from now, 
How much have you got to put away starting, you know, kind of from one year from now in order to have enough money at that point? So you've got to put money away for 17 years and then that, that amount should grow to enough to equate to this. So now this is a, a, a kind of several steps here. What I'm going to do is we're going to find out the present value or the value of these four payments. We're going to use a shortcut formula and given that the shortcut formula assumes that cash flows occur one year from now, then that means you're going to define the value at time 17. We're then going to discount this back to time zero. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we know the time va the time zero value, we know the, the interest rate, we know the, type, the T, we then solve the shortcut formula for C, the cash flow. So I'm going to use, I'm going to show you how to do this and I'm actually also going to use another function of Excel which is uh, very useful and it's the PMT function and uh, you'll see how to do this. So let's take the first step. The first step is we find the value well, it, we'll write these things out. Cash flows are 30,000 euros. R is equal to, what is it? R is equal to 14%. Um, and T, well, we've got four payments. So we're just going to say T is equal to four. So what's the value at time 17? And we'll write 17 just to keep us right. Well, it's equal to PV, the rate is 14, number of periods 4, and the payment is 30K, 30,000. So that is the value at time 17 is 87,411. You can see that in this, for this sp uh, slide here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to discount this back to time 0, and let's call that PV. So it's that value divided by 1 plus 14% to the power, now how much is it? Well, we're in time 17, so we've got to discount that back 17 years, and that comes out to be 9422. You can see here, we've calculated it there. Now, so we know the present value of those uh, four years of payments. What we want to do now is say, well, okay, how much have we got to put away every year? And so we want to calculate uh, and this is the second part of this. We've got PV is equal to 9,000. T is equal to 17 because we're going to be saving for 17 years. R is equal to 14%. What is C? Now, Excel has a formula called PMT. And that tells you what the payment is. Okay, so it's the rate is 14%. The number of periods is 17 and the present value is 9422. Now this is going to come out as a negative value because it's a payment. 1478.60. Now look, I've gone through the calculation here. That is you looking up a textbook, but you can go through the uh, the formula if you want. See, we get the same answer, r almost exactly the same. And that is saying that if you want to save up for your child's education, you're going to have to put away 1,500 pounds roughly every year. Okay, which would come out to be over a hundred pounds, uh, or about hundred hundred pounds per per month. So if you're you're about to have a child, or you're going to have one. Start thinking about this. The final formula is a growing annuity. Now this is pretty horrendous. Uh, this formula, um, I, you know, the, de the full derivation is given in the textbook. You may be asked this question. I'm going to be quite quick here. Why? Because I do have to rush off to go to the dentist. I apologise. But let's just look at this example. We've got this example 4.22 from the chapter, chapter 4. You've got a second year MBA student, just been offered a job at 80000 a year. Anticipates the salary will grow by 9% until his retirement in 40 years. So you've got a growth rate, 9%. You've got time period, 40 years. You've got the cash flow, which is 80, the initial cash flow, which occurs one year from now. Uh, let's just assume that here. Uh, and the interest rate is 20%. So you have to use this formula. Put that in. You end up with the present value of your lifetime salary is 700,000. Okay. 
Um, example 4.23 is an extension on the previous one with William and Kate Windsor. All it does is it just brings in the, the growth rate. Uh, I'll leave you to do that. Um, this is the, the calculation for that. But I have to go, unfortunately. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the lecture. And I will be back with future lectures in the coming weeks. Thank you very much.